Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's look at some good examples of a what we call geometric isomer. Starting with 1-butene, we have the double bond as the first bond in the chain, and this is what the molecule looks like. And then we have 2-butene, where we have the double bond as the second bond in the chain. Now that particular molecule has what we call two structural isomers, two different shapes of the very same molecule. We also call that the cis-trans isomer pair because in one case we have the two metals on one side of the molecule in the other case we have them on opposite sides so this we call cis-2-butene the two indicates the double bond is the second bond in the chain and the cis means that they're, both of the metal groups are on the same side of the molecule here trans-2-butene again two means that we have the double bond as the second bond in the chain and the chain goes like this and trans means that the two metal groups are on opposite sides of the molecule. Now there's a difference, may not be much, but slight. The trans 2-butene is more stable than the cis 2-butene. Why is that? Well, first of all, there's a 4 kilojoule per mole difference. You would require 4 kilojoules to turn this molecule, per mole I should say, to turn this molecule into one of these. The reason is, when we have a trans molecule like that, or maybe I should go over here, when you have a cis molecule like that, one of the H's of the CH3 is closer to this H, same over on this side, than when you have the trans molecule, the bond angle is a little bit different, and the hydrogens are a little bit farther apart, so therefore there's less repulsive force, and therefore a more stable situation. So on the cis molecule, one of the H, atoms of the metal group is closer to the opposite H. So in this case, these are close together. Here, they're a little bit farther apart because the bond angle is a little bit greater and therefore it's a more stable molecule. So you can see there are subtle differences and as the molecules become more complicated, the number of isomers increases quite quickly. But we'll go through that step. We'll go through how to detect and how to draw the various isomers, at least for the more simple molecules, so you get a good feel for how to come up with the various types and why they make sense. That's how it's done.